<laughs> so I'm Antti Auhjärnen and I'm co-founder of Pericom Finland, an organization focused on democratic economy and alternatives to capitalism. I'm also a primary school teacher uh, and I think that work informs me also with my activism and, and intellectual work. I come from a very poor family, so I lived in orphanages when I was a child. Uh, and at some point, I started reading about other countries and economy for, I don't know, for what reason, um, an egalitarian philosophy. And I realized that Finland, where I'm from, uh, is one of the most egalitarian countries there is. And we have a you know, magnificent welfare state and also systems of support for those in poverty. And still my life and my childhood in poverty was really, really bad. Uh, and I started thinking, how, how bad can it be in other countries? Um, and through that process, I came to realize that um, I want to do something about it. Uh, and I sort of picked, picked the economy and picked the idea that I think we need to have serious discussion about alternatives to capitalism if we're ever going to go forward with this. I definitely agree that capitalism is efficient, but like you said, it's for a very small group. Uh, and then also capitalism is efficient also uh, at sort of bad things. So capitalism is efficient at extracting natural resources. Capitalism is efficient at creating waste. Uh, and these problems are really accumulating in recent decades. Uh, and capitalism is very much at the core of that problem. Um, and I think that the problem people still, scientists grasp it, scientists are very worried and a lot of young people are, uh, but that's also one of the reasons I think we need to have a serious discussion about our economy, because there are uh, very dangerous dynamics in the capitalism we have today that are seriously threatening biodiversity and the climate uh, ecosystem of our planet. Um, and if we don't address those problems at the level of our economic system uh, and create global structures that really, you know, tackle uh, emissions and carbon emissions especially very seriously, as well as problems like mining um, in third world countries, um, we, we will end up in a serious, serious disaster. There has been a strange thing happening in the past 50 years that uh, labor movements and popular movements that really pushed forward uh, reforms like, uh, uh, like uh, healthcare bills and social support systems or uh, free daycare and all sorts of systems of support that actually make capitalism livable. Uh, and they were the results of social movements throughout decades. And at some point, the capitalist PR machine grabbed all those uh, magnificent you know, achievements and tacked them on capitalism, saying that you know, this is the result of capitalism, that all this wouldn't be possible without capitalism, when in reality it was the work of you know, social democratic movements, labor unions, reform movements, people's movement that demanded you know, better uh, uh, level of living. Um, and I think that is also at the core like what we need today. That people are active and take a look at their lives, think about what's wrong with their lives, and start demanding you know, uh, more time, for example, for themselves and their families, uh, instead of having you know, immense possibilities to spend money on electronics or, or other sorts of very wasteful equipment. Uh, they will have uh, resources together to build libraries or social support centers or daycares or other activities that are languishing currently because capitalism doesn't support that kind of activity. So uh, what I think is that today uh, we, need, we need to understand that we can have a much healthier and you know, much more happier life than we currently have. And if we take capitalism seriously and recognize the problems that capitalism has and work together as popular movements or different kinds of associations to really, you know, build structures that help people, you know, help elderly people, help families, help those people who are alone, help the youth, help kids, um, and, you know, bring people together, uh, we can have much better 
standard of living from today uh, and still have you know less uh, environmental waste, have less environmental problems, especially if those people coming together demand that politicians and heads of corporations create much stricter limits uh, on what, how we pollute and how much we can, you know, consume. Um, so I sort of think that we can live much better uh, if, if we are anti-capitalist. And I think that's a very important um, philosophical point as well, that we should be striving towards doing better things, having, leading happier lives, um, instead of just focusing on what's bad. Uh, and I think that sort of dreaming and having a vision of, of how we could live, you know, better uh, also helps us recognize the problems that we have currently. Well, the beginning already exists. Like people are working, I think, everywhere in the world uh, to help those living in poverty, to help protect wildlife areas, to help, you know, push for more stricter environmental laws or create taxation systems that actually you know, uh, stop tax havens and these kind of problems. And, you know, building on those, people being active and taking part in actual, you know, work that helps us all uh, is the first step. If we just, you know, uh, are passive and, and don't help one another, that's a problem. Uh, and if we get that thing moving uh, and we help each other, I think generation by generation we can build a completely different economy and a completely different society. But I think that that's, that's a process that takes generations. That's what, one of the things that people do today, that people look for sort of places in the current system. Um, and I think we should be dreaming about new places and we should be working on how we could together go to uh, a whole new ways of, of you know, helping one another and, and creating just, you know, standards of living and helping the everyday life for everyone. Because nowadays, a lot of like poor people or elderly people and so on are left behind. Uh, and there's basically like no place for them. Um, and I think in a healthy society, we could create, you know, room and actual participation for everyone.